captive is an insurance company and they take on a few different forms. One is a wholly owned captive where a corporation owns an insurance company and basically cedes its risk to its own company. Then you have group captives where you have multiple different policy holders, none of which are owned by the same company that in essence put all of their exposures collectively in aggregate and insure them as a whole. And then you have rent a captives where you basically rent someone else's captive and their surplus to um, create certain deals. But the, the beautiful thing about captives is that it really allows you to design what type of program you want, as well as typically pick all the vendors that would be included in that type of a transaction. Well, you know, I, I think the process and deciding whether a captive uh, works or not uh, simplistically can be looked at as, you know, is there an efficient marketplace? And, and what we try to do with our clients is find out what is their cost of risk if they go to the marketplace. Is that cost of risk efficient? If it's seen to be too much money, if it doesn't work, if the vendors that they want to use aren't available, then that's a perfect captive candidate. If the market is efficient and there are people that will take that risk off someone's balance sheet, then it probably makes more sense to use the insurance community. But what captives really are used as is a hedge so that if you want to take a higher deductible, if you want to self-insure in certain areas, and you deem that the market's inefficient in those areas, you can use a captive to cover that and self-insure. It's a long-term commitment. You have to understand that you have to have a, a partner, you have to have a risk transfer that you really believe in that can help you evaluate the decision. This is not a decision that you turn on one year and then turn off. It is a decision and a commitment that you are making for a three or a five year plus period. It will be a good decision when you get all done if you're dealing with those ex experts that can help you make the decision. But you have to understand it's a very long-term commitment and when you make it, you, you need to have confidence that you've made the right decision because you're gonna be living with it for an extended period of time. There's definitely a lot of frictional costs up front to get into a captive. There's the captive management fee, there's uh, the cost of an LLC, there's excise tax, depending on whether it's uh, domestic in the states or it's an offshore uh, captive, et cetera, but it does offer some tax acceleration advantages. Um, it definitely creates a lot of stickiness with uh, the customer who's in the captive because it's typically three to three to five year period before you start seeing a return on your investment. Well, let me start by saying that the beauty of what we're doing right now is that uh, certain things can be edited out. And you have heard it suggested that a captive is not a risk management tool. That is absolutely false. It is one of the greatest <laughs> risk management tools that you can imagine. Now, when you're dealing with an organization such as risk transfer, you can find a way to transfer the risk or you can find a way to retain the risk. A captive provides an alternative vehicle of retaining the risk that has considerable options and benefits. Now with that said, yes, this is another vehicle that is not new to risk transfer but a vehicle that allows their clients to further benefit in making the decision how much risk to retain, how much administration to retain, and a way to really control some of their captive and their ability to select the risk partners that they have in the transaction. I guess the only real prerequisite is having an open mind and a willingness to allow risk transfer to work with the client to see if it makes sense. Now, it may become more feasible based upon the characteristics of an account, but there isn't anybody that should eliminate it from consideration. All states and 50 states, um, you know, any line of insurance for the most part has and can be used for a captive. Typically, captives work better with long tail lines. And what I mean by that is lines of insurance where it takes a longer period of time to figure out what the total liability or total exposure is. Um, lines like workers' compensation, professional liability, 
automobile liability, lines of insurance where there, when there is a claim, it's a lawsuit that goes on for a period of time or somebody's off work and they're off work for who knows how much time. That's when captives seem to be more efficient. Had the pleasure of working with a company in Ada, Michigan, and they sell a lot of products around the uh, world, and they had uh, a review of how much money they paid for their product's liability product, and they concluded it made very good sense for them to consider a captive, and they set up a captive, and it was not anything that they had given consideration to in the past. And by the way, that's a company called Amway. Well, frankly, the first thing they need to do is be sure that it's a partner that they have trust in and someone that they would feel comfortable in dealing with without consideration to the captive. And once you have confidence in that organization, like risk transfer, then there isn't anything that you should eliminate from the consideration. You should give consideration to any and all of the vehicles that are available to assist you in dealing with the risk associated with a, with a given insurance product. If you're in a captive, you have a lot of say in a risk management component. We already mentioned vendor selection, such as you know who the third party administrator is, who administers the claims, the loss control component, uh, surveillance, uh, and the like. Because the the owner of the captive has skin in the game, they're taking risks, they have a say in uh, exactly who they choose, whether it's bundle services uh, with, the, with the fronting carrier, or it's uh, you know, a decision they need to make because they're basically the carrier in this, in this case. They have a say in basically who provides the services. I think following the financial transactions of the captive may be a little bit more burdensome from an administrative standpoint, but Outside of that, uh, typically within any captive, there's a very strong captive manager, whether it's an agency captive or a group captive. Uh, there's somebody behind the scenes, such as a risk transfer, um, keeping an eye on how everything's flowing in the transaction. So whether you're on a straight guaranteed cost or a loss sensitive plan, quite frankly, I think the captive's not gonna add any other administrative burden other than the financial transactions a little different than the norm. Really, it's, it's how much administration you wanna take on. You know, if you're IBM and you want to insure your own risk and start your own insurance company, you probably want to go A to Z and control everything. If you're one of our typical insureds, then you might want to, you know, choose the claims vendor. You might want to choose loss control. You might want to have nothing to do with any of the administration. But the beauty about captives is like any self-insurance plan, it's your choice.